This video is brought to you by Brilliant, a great way to learn computer science and much more. Go to brilliant.org slash Traversy Media and the first 200 subscribers get 20% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So this is actually going to be my last video from this office. We bought a house and I'll be moving my studio there uh, probably within the week. So I wanted to do kind of a, a vlog type video, not just a tutorial, uh, just because this will be the last, the last video here. But the topic I want to kind of venture into is, is frustration in programming. Frustration with, you know, getting stuck or, or with learning or just dealing with life and work because that can be very difficult. Um, so I think that there's a few factors that go into be getting really frustrated. And one of them is that your mind is is you know, full force for six, eight, ten plus hours a day. And that, that can take a toll on your, on your brain. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that, that, uh, that don't do this. You know, like if you have friends that are construction workers or, you know, uh, anybody that does hard labor, I'm sure they've said it to you that you have a cushy job or something like that. You know, you know, you have a desk job, like it's, like it's simple. Um, because they're only looking at the physical aspect, even though sitting all day is horrible for your back and, and can cause a lot of problems. But besides the point, it's, it's strenuous mentally and they don't, they don't understand that. They don't see that. Um, when your brain is, is, is that active for that long, it's, it can really just, it can cause anxiety and, and stress and in some cases even depression. I've heard of people like actually getting clinically depressed because they program too much. Um, and some, some of you may think that that sounds silly, but it's true. It can happen because your mind is always, um, is just always that full force. And when you stop, when you go down, you know, or go home to see your family, you're, you're still, uh, you're thinking in that way. You're thinking in that black and white coders mentality and you have to deal with life issues like your relationship, um, you know, dealing with your children and stuff like that. And it's, it's difficult to switch. At least for me, I can't, I can't speak for, for everyone, but at least for me, it's hard to go from, um, you know, writing a Node.js application to, um, dealing with a, an issue in my relationship with my wife. It's, it's hard to transition because coding is so black and white. And my wife has actually told me this over and over that since I started doing this, cause she knew me before I, I even knew how to program or do any of this stuff. Um, she says that now I can't really see the gray in stuff. I, it's always black and white, you know, and, and that makes sense because in coding, everything is, you know, it's ones and zeros or true or false. It's, it's this or that. So it makes sense that that would, that would go into your personal life. And that can be, you know, that, that can be not a good thing because you need to be able to see, see the gray in, in some areas, in some aspects. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one thing. Uh, another cause of frustration, I think, is the technologies. Uh, there's so much to learn um, and, and they're always evolving. So if you're a web developer, you have to learn HTML, CSS, which is fine. That's easy compared to, you know, a lot of other things. But then you have to move on to front end JavaScript. You have to learn enough of that to learn a front end framework. You have to then learn the back end if you want to be a full stack developer, if you want to make more money. Um, so you have to learn a back end language like PHP or Python or, or even, you know, JavaScript, Node.js. Uh, then you have to learn a framework and a database and Git and, and DevOps. And I could just sit here forever and, and, and just spout off um, different technologies that web developers need to learn. So that that's very frustrating. You know, um, I think that a sol not a solution, but I think that something that can help with that is to realize that you don't need to know everything. Um, you should focus on one specific stack. And what I mean by stack is, you know, a, fr a front end language. Well, your front end language is going to be JavaScript uh, if you're a web developer. But choose, choose a back end technology like Node or Python or PHP. You know, works, try to work with a specific database, whether it's MySQL or Postgres or a, a NoSQL database. Uh, whatever it may be, like MongoDB, um, you know, pick pick just a set of technologies and tools that you're going to work with and try to master that set of technologies rather than just going everywhere. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not okay to, to venture into other languages and other frameworks, 
but but have one as your main stack and then just experiment in the others. I do definitely think you get you benefit from learning multiple languages and multiple frameworks because you can kind of compare and contrast and it just makes you an over a better overall um, developer. So uh, yeah, but just you know focus on one thing and try not to get overwhelmed. I know that even if you do focus on a certain stack, it's oh they're always updating. You're always learning new methods, and 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 you're you get comfortable with something, and then it it they take it out. You know, it gets it gets deprecated, and you can't use it anymore. And it's it's really frustrating, especially for um, someone like me that makes courses. You know, you come out I come up with a course, and then a month later something gets dropped, or they add something new, something changes. And it's, it's, it, I can't even tell you how frustrating it is. Um, but I know most of you guys aren't doing courses, but it still applies in regular dev work. So, you know, I think another source is errors, is, is being stuck. You know, when you, when you can't find the answer to your problem, it's super frustrating. I mean, if you get an error and you're searching and there's, there's nothing, there's like, it's, it's, it's nowhere on the internet, it's very hard to debug. You know, when you have no help, um, or if you get no error at all, and, and but something is still wrong, that's another issue too. I've actually had days. I've had days where I've been stuck on one issue, and it really helps if you have, uh, if you're on a team, if you work for a company and you have team members uh, that you can ask for help. That's that's a really good resource because some of us uh, work by ourselves. You know, freelancers or people that have their own business or people that just work remotely that don't have access to a direct person to come over and help us, uh, it makes it a lot tougher, you know, when you have to deal with posting on like Stack Overflow and um, dealing with all the trolls and arrogant people and stuff like that. So that can get really frustrating as well. Um, but, you know, ask for help if, if you have people around you, whether it's team members or friends or um, instructors or, or whoever whoever's there that can help take advantage of it um, try to step away uh, this helps me a lot when I when I'm stuck I just take a break and that break could be 10 minutes it could also be the rest of the day a lot of times I'll run into an issue and I'll just get so frustrated I'll just stop for the day but then I'll wake up I'll get a good night's sleep I'll sit down and I'll figure it, it right out so um, you know, that's it's that's definitely um, probably the best advice that I can give if you get stuck is to take a break from it. I don't know if like something if the gears t are turning subconsciously like while you're sleeping or whatever, but I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. Uh, but yeah, so just you know, try to take your time. I know that especially if you're a beginner, it's very overwhelming and it gets very frustrating. I've even seen people quit over it, over thinking they can't do it because there's a lot to it. There's a lot to development. Um, and I don't care if you're a web developer. I don't care if you write kernels in, in C or game engines in C++. Uh, or even if you're, you do just HTML, CSS. I mean, it, it can get frustrating with like design and UI and all that stuff. So just try to take your time, focus on certain things, um, find good resources on the internet, you know, good courses with instructors that um, you resonate with or, or whatever. So, um, you know, I think that's it. So I just wanted to kind of uh, do a video, you know, face to face or face to camera. Uh, last time in this office and hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. So programming is all about logic with some principles of math and science and a great place to strengthen your mind and become a better overall programmer is brilliant. They have some of the most unique types of brain building courses I've ever seen including computer science and math courses, quizzes and more. The tests and quizzes really break down the answers for you when you get them wrong and they give you a much better understanding of, of where you went wrong. And it doesn't matter which type of program you are or which language you use, Brilliant's concepts benefit everyone in in the industry by installing deep problem-solving skills and critical thinking. You won't learn to memorize like many online courses teach, but you'll learn to understand and really wrap your head around all types of concepts that have to do with computer science and just logic in general. They have both free and premium accounts available, so click on the link in the description and the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off.